So in this um, inequality, we've defined the range of values that satisfies this inequality here. So this is like two inequalities matched together. We're kind of used to doing these on a linear scale where we can take this left hand side and then we can take this right hand side. But now we have like this quadratic expression in the middle. So if you like, it's this curve and it wants to know where is this curvy graph? Where is this greater than 3x plus 4 but also less than 9 minus 2x? So from a point of view of like visualizing this in your head, you have this U-shaped curve and you have these two lines. All right, like so. And you want to know where's it greater than one but less than the other. So there's like some little area where that happens, right? You don't have to think about it visually, but what I will do is say, you can do this the same way as linear. It's just thinking about the solution is what you have to get to here. So actually talking it out and say, where is this greater than this stuff, but also less than this stuff? So we'll actually do them as two separate inequalities there. So let's start on this one here first. Now, you've done these maybe a couple of times at this stage if you're at this level. So you know, okay, to do this, I'm going to solve it as a quadratic because even though this is a curve and it's less than the line, if we rearrange this such that it's like zero on the left-hand side now, I always like to keep the x squared positive. And let's bring over this stuff. So it's going to be minus 3x. And now we bring over this 4, it becomes minus 4. So minus 6 minus 4 is minus 10. So actually, the set of solutions for where x squared minus 3x minus 10 is greater than 0 is the same as the set of solutions for this. But like, even if that's overthinking it for you, just know that you have to do this. So this is something where it's some curve, it has two roots, and um, doesn't always have to go through the origin like this. I just always draw the sketch I was showing the origin just to so you understand that's what I'm drawing. So we'd like to know where this curve is greater than 0. So it's all these points here greater than zero above the zero line. So all this stuff here and all this stuff here. So I'm kind of looking for this point here and this point here. And I'm going this way to find solutions where it's greater than zero. And I'm going this way to find solutions where it's greater than zero. So to do that, we're going to find those two points. Those two points are the roots. So we kind of like factorize this expression. So that's like x minus five, x plus two. So it turns out the two roots are um, five and minus two. So great. So we know this number now here is 5. We know this number here is minus 2. So it actually turns out the solution set for this is when x is uh, greater than 5 but less than minus 2. So read from the inside out. So x is greater than 5 but x is less than minus 2. So, um, and in general, look, it's not a less than or equal to symbol. That's why I don't have equal to symbols here, right? So that's the solution set for this. A similar situation over here. So let's bring this stuff over to the quadratic. So we've x squared, that's going to become now a plus 2x. And um, we have minus 6, and bring over the 9, it becomes minus, that makes it minus 15, and we're left with less than 0. So now we have this quadratic graph again, and we want to know where is it less than 0, which is all this stuff down here. So again, we're looking for this point here and this point here, which are the roots. So let's factorize it to get those. So x plus 5 and x minus 3. So if x is equal to minus 5 or x is equal to plus 3. So that's this point here must be the minus 5 and this point here must be the plus 3. So it looks like the solution set for this, well, it's in between minus 5 and 3 is this part of the graph that's below 0. So now when x is less than 3 and when x is greater than minus 5. So we're still not at the answer. Remember, I found these two individual components and I want to know where they overlap. So what solution sets fits so the two of these work together? So I'm going to show you a way maybe to think about this and let's maybe draw two number lines. Let's bring it right back to the start, the introduction to this type of stuff. Let's actually see where these solutions are. So let's draw one basic number line. Let's put zero here. So what numbers do we have here? We have a three and we also have a 5, and we also have a minus 5 and a minus 2. Let me put in the minus 2. I have to keep it some way to scale, it doesn't matter. Okay, and so for this stuff here, the solution set is less than minus 2 but greater than 5. So let's kind of uh, scribble in here and purple this stuff here. All right, so these are all the solutions to this one, and greater than 5. 
So I'd have an open circle there, wouldn't I? Because it doesn't include them. And let's go with, we'll say, red for this other solution set. So let's see where these work. So when x is less than 3, so let's go underneath, but greater than minus 5. So we have greater than minus 5, and we can continue all the way up to 3, and again, open circles. Yeah. So the red line and the number line is the solution set for this stuff, and the purple lines are the solution set to this stuff. So where do they overlap? Well, the only place that they overlap is in here. Between minus 5 and minus 2. That's the only section where these solution sets overlap. Therefore, this must be the solution. So therefore, we can write our solution as x must be less than minus 2, but greater than minus 5. And that's it. So look, hopefully that's the way you might understand it. And you can go on and try some more examples. That's from the book, I think the advanced section, question 1 of text and test 4.